This is the home of the Elishas, days after the gruesome murder. Pastor Elisha Olawale has continued to receive condolence messages in the aftermath of the incident. For the opt-in time, he recounts the death of the mother of his children just before dawn on Saturday. We were told that uh, they killed a woman here, a preacher. The policeman said, yeah, it is true, but we should go to phase four police station. So as we were going, people were looking at us. My daughter, Jessica, was crying. I said, no, we have no comfort. It cannot be mommy. As we were entering the police station gate, we saw the uh, police pickup coming out of the gate to pass us. So my daughter looked back and saw at the back of, it was snow cover, at the back of the policeman, she cried. I turned back and I saw that from the chest up was covered. But I now saw the clothes of my wife she wore. Other members of the family also spoke about how they got wind of the death of their sister. Yeah. So there's no anyone that's no anywhere where we are in three and then one have left now, the main two. How am I going to forget about her? It's not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. But all lot I just believe that I'm expecting what the police are going to <laughs> But I know the Nigeria police, if they want to work, eh, they will bring it out. That's what I know. But in other hand, again, hmm, I know their strategies. She will always call and say, uh, your message is the message of heaven. Jesus will come any time from now. And even if Jesus does not come, what of if you die? And if you die, do you have a place going? So even our aged father is staying with my brother in Ikoroduna. We've not told him because the man is strong. Yesterday, my brother called me and said, my father asked that he wanted to speak with my sister, that uh, she, she wanted to see her or wanted to speak with her. I told my brother, I said, tell the, the old man, she has traveled out. She's not around for now. When she comes back, she will give you a call. So we're hoping that by the time we will leave Abuja now, we'll go, we'll take him back to our people in the village. And this is a part of Cuba where the 42-year-old preacher was hacked to death between 5 and 5.30 on Saturday morning. Residents of the area, including dudes who said they saw her on a fateful day, gave an account of what happened. The faulted people living close to the crime scene for failing to respond to the victim's cry for help. There is a market close to that place being, I know, uh, being occupied by some men of the underworld. Uh, would I say you when you get there you feel that some um, occupants that that place is like a deserted place just just this market street here, but this area has have vigilante. There is one here. There is one there. I wonder because she would have screamed and she would have shouted. People would have heard. You know, I think you know security as a whole. It's not one man's job. It's everybody's job. But on Saturday, we woke up to see the horrible sight of her body lying in her own pool of blood, hacked to death, caught in many places. First, I think, is on the leg, and then uh, on the, to so the stomach was slashed, and then the, the, the throat was slit, so it was so bad, and uh, it's regrettable. It's a horrible situation. Uh, people around by the time the woman was shouting at least if somebody is uh, very very conscious of around in the environment you have even say okay let me even come and see what is happening but it's, it's a pity that nobody then again you don't know what the police are doing because when police comes around sometimes they arrest people ordinarily those who does not do, do anything but now people are smoking same and those people, boys they build the leg or something there with, they are still, they, even the houses, we expected them to come and pull it down. It is the work of the police that they should do. But they've not been able to come and do it. The houses are there. There are others who blame the security situation on the upsurge of shanties in the area. They say the slums have become a haven for hoodlums suspected to be perpetuating similar crimes in the community and want the police to do more to ensure safety. As you can see, this environment is uh, inhabited by unidentifiable people who don't really look like Nigerians. Most of them appear like uh, Nigerians. So they are the ones staying in all these bashers around this place. Apparently they constitute nuisance and risk to the life of people around this place. So we just call on government to do something about it. This time that everywhere I've developed, 
that we now see security lapses everywhere. And what causes all this is because we relax, we see those of these boys that do, cannot afford money to rent a house. You understand me? Well, at least we look at them as neighbor. So, and they, they spread all over the places. They are everywhere. That's bachelor, yes, bachelors. There are so many that now they become a security threat. Two days after the incidents, traces of blood are still here on the spot. Members of the families have spoken on what transpired on that Saturday. We have also heard from the eyewitnesses and even the police have spoken on the matter. What comes of it is yet to be known. Matthew Igoche, PTV News, Abuja.